What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Sky Bees. Oh, yeah, guys. So today we are going to be looking at... Oops, I pressed the wrong button. We're going to be looking at trying to get into power. As we saw last episode, we have a few things that we were trying to do to get to this thermo generator. Uh, the starter version, we had to make this dielectric paste. In order to make that, we have to make a mana pool. So we have like all this Batania stuff to get into. I haven't really done anything at the base since the end of last episode. Uh, just kind of like afk a little bit. So these flowers are growing. So we have some extra. Uh, but yeah, let's take a look at this. There is a Batania section here. And I didn't look at this at all. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, there is a, a thing here, a check mark where we can get ourselves the book. So let's go ahead and do that and claim the book. All right, so there's our Lexica Batania in our hand now. There is a flower pouch as well, apparently. Uh, and in order to do that, we need to get ourselves some wool and a petal, I guess. Okay, so let's make ourselves a flower pouch. I don't know how necessary it is for us to do that, especially since we're storing all of our flowers over in their own drawers right now. You know, I keep seeing this thing and I think it's a cow every time I look past it. I think it's like a baby cow or something. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we need to get ourselves some wool. We have a little bit and we need a petal. So let's grab string. Wow, we don't really have very much. Okay, you know what? Let's do this. I'm gonna grab shears. Do we have shears? I feel like we had shears right here. And we should have some sheep. All right, let's do it this way. Thank you for your wool and thank you for your wool. Okay, so now we should be able to do it without having to use string. Otherwise, we'd just grow a tree infested with uh, the silkworms and convert string into wool blocks. But yeah, we don't have to do that. Okay, very good. And then I guess it doesn't matter which color we take. Let's grab light blue, I suppose. All right. So there's our petals. And then we can turn this into the flower pouch. So I think it was like a hopper, right? With this. There it is. Okay. So there is a flower pouch. You right click on it. And then this can store all of the different types of flowers. So. Yeah, I guess technically not really that necessary to store them all over here. Although I don't know if this only stores up to a stack or if this can store like an infinite amount of these flowers. I don't know. Let's go and grab the white ones though and we'll throw those in there. Okay, yeah. You know what? I'll just go and grab all of these. Look at all these uh, tasks completed that we're getting. Nice. We just completed all the quests. Huh. Uh, we'll throw all of these in here just so we have nice easy access to them. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Okay, so now that we have that, the flower pouch with full of flowers. Oh man, this thing's still going. Let's see what our next quest is. So that is black dye. So this wants us to get a black, a mystical black flower, turn it into a petal, and then put it with a pestle and mortar. So that is pretty cheap. It's just a bowl plank and a stick so i think we can easily make all of that stuff let's take a look at what we got real quick uh let's grab that okay so we need a bowl we need a plank a stick and a bowl yeah awesome all right and then we need the black petal okay and then that's gonna give us black dye i guess <laughs> all right uh, yeah, I think normally you just take this and this. Okay, yeah, so that gives us the black dye. Awesome. So we have the ability to turn the petals into dyes now, which is really good. Um, moving on from that, what else do we have? The petal apothecary. Okay, cool. So this is what we were wanting to make anyway. So a petal apothecary is made with one petal, some slabs, and some cobblestone. I don't know if I have cobble up here. It does not look like it. So let's go down and grab our cobble. Did I grab a stack? I grab a stack. Yeah, we'll grab that. We'll bring it back upstairs here. Make some slabs. And then we'll just do this to make it easy. Okay, so there's our petal apothecary. Awesome. So now that's done. It wants us to start making some of these other mana generating flowers. But what we really need to do is just make this pure daisy right now. So the petal apothecary with four flowers, I think you need one wheat seed to complete the recipe and then water in the petal apothecary. So uh, let's grab 
these. So there is four mystical white petals. Throw that down. You can uh, right click water into this or you can cue your bucket on there and it'll empty it. So you can use that for like an automation. Same thing with the uh, petals. You can cue them in there or you can right click, I think, or maybe you can just cue them in there. You have to throw them in. Okay, so we are ready to go, but we need to get ourselves one wheat seed. Unless the recipes have been changed, which I don't think they have. Yeah, it says right there on the on the thing, uh, the four petals with the arrow and plus one wheat seed equals a flower. And there we go. All right, so there is a pure daisy. Awesome. So we can put this like practically anywhere. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, what we are trying to do with that is turn that into a living rock. And in order to make that, we have to put some kind of a... It says, accepts any forge colon stone. So normally you're supposed to put any, or you're supposed to put uh, smooth stone around it, but it looks like we can put like polished, pretty much anything that says uh, forge colon stone on it. But I guess we don't really have a lot. I mean, I guess I could take some diorite and do that, or we can smelt down some stone. Uh, what did I do with all my charcoal? I know we have a bunch of it. I think we're just gonna smelt down some stone. Actually, do I have some downstairs? I might have extra that we've made before. I don't remember. Oh yeah, okay, we don't have to smelt anything. We have plenty of stone down here. Yeah, I did a whole bunch of bulk smelting and I just don't remember what all I have. Uh, all right, so we just do this and you'll see little particles flash around them showing you that's doing something. Mm-hmm, let's take 60 seconds. Okay, here we go. It's converting. Sweet. So now we have our living rock. We can just vein mine this. Nice. So task completed living rock. Uh, looks like it also wants us to make living wood for this quest. So it's the same exact thing for the living wood. You just have to put wood around it instead of stone. So uh, just any type of log, I believe, will work like so. And then again, you wait 60 seconds. And that's converting now. Awesome. So now we can just go ahead and vein mine this with our ax and there we go. So now both of those are done. Cool. So task complete. Uh, looks like it wants us to make the mana pool and wand of the forest. I don't think we need wand of the forest at the moment, but we will need it. We will need it. Uh, so that's done. That's done. That's done. Mana pool. Yeah. Let's just go ahead and make a mana pool real quick. So there it is. Mana pool. Quest complete mana pool advancement made a vivid wave okay so that one's done so now that it has unlocked a whole bunch of other things this is like pretty mid to late game batania stuff so dielectric pace this is what we are looking for and there is actually a quest for it so that's pretty cool but we can't make this until we have made mana and in order to make mana we have to look at these over here mm -hmm. uh so i don't know which way we're gonna make mana this time maybe and I don't know what the best way to do it. It's fun uh, to make the uh, the slime flower <laughs> where uh, slime spawn in a slime chunk and you teleport them over and then the slime flower eats those. I did that in Project Dozone 3. That's fun. But I don't really know which way I want to do it this time. Generating flower. Yeah, the uh, Nar Slimus is what I use for the slime. Um, we've done the cake flower before. The Gore Morales is pretty easy. Just throw any sort of food at it. Yeah, I don't really know. I, I mean, Endo Flame is probably, this is probably going to be like how we can start because we have to have a little bit of mana before we can make these other ones. I'm pretty sure because those require runes and stuff. Yeah, I guess we'll just go ahead and make some Endo Flames. All right, in the interest of speeding things up, I moved our Petal Apothecary down here. And I have all the flowers ready to go. We're going to make ourselves eight endo flames. So we need two uh, brown petals per one light gray and one red. So essentially eight brown flowers, four of the light gray and four of the red flowers. Okay, so that should be all of the stuff that we need in order to get this done. Uh, so let's go ahead and put some water in here. I will cue in two of those one, one, and then a seed. Okay. We'll put water back in here and you can see the tip says right click with an empty hand to do it again. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. So 
I like doing it this way where you right click, drop a seed, and then put the water in there, right click, and then drop a seed. It just makes it a little bit faster. <laughs> uh, all right, so there's that one. And then water again. I could like get my inventory a little bit in a better place where this is even faster to do, but this works just fine. Uh, so seed, water, right click, seed, and we have eight endo flames. Nice. All right, so in order to get endo flame, the mana that we'll produce from this into a mana pool, we have to have a mana spreader. So I don't recall there being a quest for a mana spreader, but uh, since we have the living wood, that should be easy. Oh no, there is a mana spreader quest right here. Check it out. Okay, so mana spreader, this is what we need to do. So that's one gold, six living wood, and then a petal. Okay, uh, we should have gold smelted and we do. I need a petal, which I do not have. Oops, let me grab that. So let's take, oh, I don't know, how about green? Doesn't really matter. Okay, and then we want a mana spreader. There we go, awesome. So that quest is now completed. Uh, we will need a wand, well, I guess technically we don't, but we will need a wand of the forest in order to aim the mana spreader at our mana pool. Okay. So let's make a wand of the forest next. Uh, you can use any color flower you want to. So if you want like a black and a white one, or if you want, I don't know, green and yellow one, you can do that and it changes the actual icon. Just a little something if you're interested in doing that. Uh, living wood twig requires two living wood per. So that means we need six more living wood to make this wand of the forest and we don't have that right now. So I need to go ahead and convert some more logs. Okay, cool. So I just went ahead and did some extra living wood and I just made some extra living stone over there. Our living rock, I guess, is what it's called. So let's make ourselves the wand of the forest. So we're going to do yellow and brown because that's the color of bees. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you can change which way you want these on there. I don't know. I guess like that's fine. We'll do that. Yeah, that, that works for me. Okay, so wander the forest, we have this. This will allow us to aim uh, the mana spreader at the mana pool, and it will also allow us to connect our endo flames to the mana spreader should they become disconnected, or if we want to move our endo flame to point to a different mana spreader. Okay, so we have that stuff. Uh, this is going to be like a temporary thing because we are not like really set up for endgame Batania yet, so this will be moved at some point in the future. So I guess we'll just throw it over here. Right? Yeah, yeah, about right here. Looks good to me. So we'll do that. I'll throw the, uh, let's do this real quick. Whoa. Can I not aim at that? Hmm. Okay. So we'll do that. Then I'll place the mana spreader here. We want it like one block higher. All right. And then we can use our wand of the forest because I have this pointing the wrong way. So shift right click, shift right click, points it down. And you can see the little beam shooting there, right? Uh, if you place the mana spreader down first and then you place your, your uh, flowers, they automatically connect. So if I hold the wand and look at this flower, uh, you can see it highlights the mana spreader. So it knows about that. Now, if I place the flowers first and then I place the mana spreader, I'd have to link each one individually. And that's a little annoying. So generally speaking, you want to place down your mana spreader first. Okay, so each one of these are already connected. They all know about it. The tool tips shows the mana spreader with a check mark. Yeah, we're all good. Okay, so now that we have that, endo flames require uh, furnace fuels. So you can use wood, you can use charcoal, anything you can burn as fuel in a furnace. Um, I think I will place down, let's just do eight uh, charcoal blocks. So these will run for a little while and these aren't really super efficient. But yeah, all you gotta do is just throw these down on the ground nearby and they'll just pick them up. And you can see the particles and they're doing things and they're sending mana wirelessly to the mana spreader. And if you hold the wand, you can see it doing what it's doing. If you look at the uh, endo flames, you right click on them. Oh, I guess these are making mana too slow and sending it too quickly. It doesn't show up here. On the later game flowers, you'll be able to see uh, when it's making mana and sending it. But anyway, you can see the mana spreader here is filling up with mana from all eight of those. And then as it gets enough, it sends a little mana burst down to the pool. And we have just a little bit of mana in there. Just a little bit. 
Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, so now that we have that, we should be able to look at making our dielectric paste, I believe. And that was coal or charcoal put into the mana pool with that much mana. However much that is, I don't know. It's a little, little pixel. Hopefully we have enough. Let's try it. Uh, charcoal. Let's not get too crazy. We'll just throw in like one or two, see how this works. So that and that, oh, it uses like next to nothing. So there's our dielectric paste, awesome. Okay, so now that we have that, that quest is done. Uh, now that we have that, we can start looking at making this generator. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, I guess the other thing is, I don't really know what this generator uses for fuel. I haven't looked at this thing at all. Um, I guess we'll make it. It's not super expensive, it looks complicated, but it's really not that expensive, just some iron and this dielectric paste. Well, obviously you need a bunch more of that paste, so let's look at making about a stack of it, I guess. Maybe half a stack would be more than enough. But I'll just go ahead and throw this all in there and see what happens. Nope. And there we go. There's 56 of the dielectric paste. Okay. I think we should be good. I'm going to go ahead and do it. just do a little bit of crafting here. I think we've looked at these recipes before. We should have basically everything, or at least the ability to make everything. I'm not sure if we have enough redstone. I might have to go uh, sift for that. But besides that, we should have the blaze powder and everything else. So anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and start doing some crafting, and we'll be back. All right, so I ended up sifting two more stacks of dust. We got plenty of redstone dust out of that as well, and some extra blaze powder. Um, yeah, it turns out you have to make these dielectric rod horizontal and the normal ones. I didn't realize that before. Two separate recipes that are basically the same thing. Uh, it's kind of weird. Anyway, here, so here's our thermo generator starter. All right, so we made this. If we look at it, we have fluid ignore facing. Oh, uh, thermo generator. Okay. Well, I'm not actually sure what you put in this. <laughs> I wasn't realizing that you had to put in fluid. I was thinking this is just going to be like a furnace generator or something. Can we not just put like logs in there? No. Aha. Uh -huh. Whoop. I clicked the button. Um, so I wonder if we can put lava in there. Does that work? Hmm. Oh, this is the wrong chest. Do we have lava around here somewhere? We have this lava bucket, which I think I need to make other lava with because I took down our um, cobblestone generator. Okay, uh, all right, well, I guess I will make some more lava real quick and then see what we can do if we can put lava in here, if that produces power or not. Be right back. So instead of using lava to make more lava, I kind of went down another path here. Uh, crucible, if we look at the uses on the fired one and we click crucible heat sources, we can see this list here. If we come over here, the highest one is block of uranium. And we have plenty of uranium, and I know there's uranium bees in this pack, so like getting this stuff isn't gonna be a big deal. But in order to make this specific block, we have to have the immersive engineering ingot in the center or a piece of uranium dust surrounded by these uranium ingots. It can be either type. If we use the uranium that you smelt into, you get this uranium block, which is not the correct one, I don't think. Uh, so what we need to do is turn one of our uranium ingots into a piece of dust. If we look at this once again, I guess I can unbookmark that. So this, we need a piece of dust in order to get that engineer's hammer. Uh, quartz grindstone we could do. Unfortunately, it requires this wooden gear, and that requires us to have a metal press, which... Is a changed recipe in this pack, so we can't do that. So engineer's hammer is what we're going to do. So string, two iron. Uh, I think I have iron on me, and then was it two sticks? All right, let's just go ahead and make this real quick, and then we will do this. Maybe. What was the recipe to do that? Let me go ahead and look one more time. Uh, this guy. This guy. Oh, okay. So I have to do the or. Whoops. Or. So that plus this, there's that. All right. And then we surround that. And there we go. Now, if we unblockify that, we get this type of uranium. 
And if we take a look at this recipe once again, that type of uranium surrounded by any other type of uranium makes more of those blocks. Okay, well, there we go. So we will grab this. Oh no, it converts back to this. What the heck? Well, that's annoying. Okay, well, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to happen, but now I know, so don't do that. There we go. All right, so we'll take just this type of uranium. Okay. Well, this should allow us to make some more lava. So we'll place that there, uh, put our crucible on it, right? And then if we put some stone in there, I think it's just four pieces of cobble. We should be able to make lava at a 5x rate. Let's just make sure this works. Yeah, it looks like the cobble's in there. It says heat five, things are happening. Okay, very good. So now that I know for sure that we can do that, I can take this one bucket of lava that I was storing and throw that in here, or at least attempt to. Does this not work? If I right click it on there, shift right click, whoop, okay. So lava does not work in this thing. Interesting, uh, or maybe you have to pipe it in. I'm not entirely sure. Well, now that we know that this is a fail, we need to rethink where we are. So I was just looking at different types of generators and down here is a honey generator from resourceful bees. Yep, generates RF using honey bottles. I didn't see this before. Okay, well, now that I've seen it, let's go ahead and mark that and get rid of all this other fail stuff. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we need a decent amount of iron for this. One piece of glass iron bars on a redstone dust and then we can make a honey generator. I don't know how much power that makes off a honey bottle, but it sounds like this is promising. So let's go ahead and start working towards that. So we needed one piece of glass and I don't think, I don't think we have a piece of glass in here, unfortunately. No, do we have any sand downstairs? Uh, we have dust, all right. Time to go ahead and start crushing down some ores once again. I think I have a hammer in here and then I have the stone wand. All right, very good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this stuff like I do. I uh, convert this down into dust, or I'm sorry, into gravel, then sand, etc., etc. All right, like so, something like that. Is that all right? That's all of it now. So now we can just. Oh, I had a uh, diamond wand. I forgot about that. We can just go ahead and do this. We'll use a. We'll finish up the stone wand and then we'll start using our diamond wand. I think that's what we need to do here. But anyway, uh, let me just go ahead and finish this up real quick, make our piece of glass and we'll look at making the honey generator. All right, so that wasn't so difficult to make this thing. We have all the resources, so let's go ahead and grab this. So honey generator, let's set this one down. And this, yeah, looks like honey bottle goes in, empty bottle comes out and we make, uh, or have a reservoir full of honey. And then we make power over here. Okay, well, let's put in a honey bottle. See what this thing does. And one honey bottle makes 6.2 K R F. Interesting. Okay, well, I don't know how far 6.2 K goes, but what I do know is I would like to get myself the um, non-manual centrifuge. What is that? It was just a regular centrifuge, I guess. Uh-huh. So again, this isn't too bad. All right. I think I tell you guys what, uh, we finally got the ability to make power. We got into Batania. This episode is starting to get a little bit on the long side. Let's go ahead and wrap it up here. Next episode, we'll take a look at using this power, right? We'll take a look at using the power. We will go ahead and start, uh, automating some things or at least doing things where I don't have to sit there and right click the manual centrifuge. Yep. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.